Hi, I'm Liz Sneddon. Today we're going to have a look and an example of tree diagrams and probability and this is looking at a disease example. So here's our problem. We've been told that at this animal park that some of the deer have contracted Daffy Deer disease. So there's a test but the test is not 100% reliable. So we've got some information here. It says if a deer has the disease, so if it has the disease, it is going to test positive 95% of the time. If the deer does not have the disease, it will test negative 90% of the time. And lastly, it is known that 20% of this population has the disease. Okay, so if we look at those pieces of information, we've got information about whether they've got a disease or not, and we've got an information about whether they would test positive or negative. Those are your two variables or the two layers that we are going to have in our tree diagram. So let's think about what happens first. First, the, the, the deer itself either contracts the disease or it doesn't. And then, then the farmer will test that deer and the test will come back positive or negative. So the first layer of the tree is going to be about whether or not the deer has the disease and the second layer of the tree is going to be whether or not the test is positive or negative. So let's think about what information we've got. The last piece there we were told it is known that 20% of this population has the disease. So that's the first thing I want to deal with. We know that 20% have the disease. Okay, so I want to say disease and D dash for not disease. So 20% have the disease, so that's 0.2. And that means 80% do not have the disease. Okay. Now I'll go back to the first piece of information. If a deer has the disease, okay, if the deer has the disease, so if it is in this branch here, then it will test positive 95% of the time. So it will then test positive. So now we've got to branch out and say, right, it could be um, positive. Okay, so it could be positive or it could be negative. So those are our two combinations, positive or negative. And we were told that if it has the disease, it will be positive 95% of the time. So it'll be 95% of the time it will be positive for deers that do have it which means 5% of the time a deer that has the disease will be negative. Okay, done that. Then the middle piece, if the deer does not have the disease, okay, if the deer does not have the disease, so we're going down this pathway here, it will test negative 90% of the time. So it would be negative 90% of the time. So there's our 90% of the time that it will be negative, which means 10% of the time it will be positive. Okay, now we're ready to fill in the right hand side, looking at all our different combinations. So first combination that we have um, is looking at this one here. So going down the disease and getting a positive result. So I can get the probability of having the disease and getting a positive result. Actually, let me do that in green to help make it clearer. Um, and I've got to multiply those branches. So 0 0.20 0 times 0 0.95, and that gives us a probability of 0 0.19. Then our next combination is it could have the disease, and it could be negative. So I'm going to multiply those two branches. So probability of having the disease but getting a negative result. And that's going to be 0 0.20 times 0 0.05 and that will give me a probability of 0 0.01. Next combination is having the disease and getting a positive result. So the probability of not having the disease and getting a positive result. 
multiply these branches. 0 0.80 times 0 0.10 will give us 0 0.08. And our last combination is not having the disease and getting a negative test result. So the probability of not having the disease and getting a negative test result. And I'm going to multiply those two, 0 0.80 times 0 0.90, which will give me 0 0.72. So there's our setup of our table. Okay, our tree diagram, sorry. Once we've got that tree diagram, now we'll go and have a look at some questions. So first question. What's the probability that an individual in the population, so this is talking about out of everybody, tests positive for this disease? Okay, so we're looking at them testing positive. So think about all our different combinations here. Which ones of those combinations give a positive result? So the first one, disease and positive, yes. The second one, disease negative, no. The third one, doesn't have the disease but got a positive result, yes. And the last one, doesn't have the disease and got a negative result, no. So to find the positive test result, the probability of a positive test result, there are two combinations. We could either have disease and positive, or, remember or means plus, we could have not have the disease and get a positive test result. So that's mean we're going to go 0 0.19 plus 0 0.08, and that gives us a probability of 0 0.27. Let's have a look now at another question around this. What proportion of those that test positive, this is an interesting one, of those that test positive actually have the disease? Okay, so this is a conditional probability. So we want to know from those that test positive. Now remember in the last question we looked at what's the chance of getting a positive result? Okay, so getting positive, it could have, they could have the disease and get a positive test, or not have the disease, but still get a positive test result. So from those people, so from the, sorry, people, deer, from the deers that are positive, oh, what am I doing those ones for? Here we go, from the deers that get a positive test result, from those two categories, what is the chance of actually having disease. So actually having the disease, this is the one that actually has the disease. So I want to know, this is conditional, probability of having the disease given, that's a straight line, knowing that I have a positive test result. So I'm dividing by the positive test result, which I would add those two together, 0 0.19 plus 0 0.08, and I'm, just, I'm on the top, on the numerator, is going to be the positive test results that from the deer that have the disease. So that's our 0 0.19. And so that is going to give us 0 0.7037. So that tells me 70% of those that give us a positive, so if I get a, t if I'm the farmer and I get a positive test result, there's a 70.37% chance that that deer actually has the disease because there's a chance that they could have a negative result, okay, that they have a false positive, sorry. Okay. Let's have a look at this question now. How would the proportion in the previous question change if only 10% of the population actually had the disease? So if only 10% actually had the disease. So at the moment, to start with, we were referring to it as having 20% having the disease. So if this changed to 10%, well, this not having the disease would have to be 90%. So now we've got to recalculate each of those combinations. So if I'm talking about having the disease with a positive test result, I'm going to multiply those two branches. So that's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.95, and that will give us a value of 0 0.095. Then 
disease negative so going oh, try that one again disease with a negative test result multiplying those two branches that's going to give me 0.1 times 0 0.05 and that will give us 0 0.005 then combination of not having the disease but getting a positive result so that is 0.9 times 0.1 which will give us 0 0.09 and lastly not having the disease and getting a negative test result I'm going to multiply those two branches so that will be 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 which is 0 0.8 one. So that's having recalculated the table with this information. Okay, and this is an excellence level question because it's something's changing about the problem. Now let's just remind ourselves of what the question was in the previous. So it said what proportion of those that test positive actually have the disease? Okay, so we want to know the probability of them testing positive if they actually have the disease. So having the probability of having the disease given that they test positive. So we need to look at those that test positive. So we've got one group here that test positive and another group here that test positive. So there's the deer that have the disease that test positive and don't have the disease that test positive. Let's combine those two together and that's going to be the size of my group that don't have the disease. So that is going to be 0 0.095 plus 0 0.09. And I want to know the proportion of those that test positive. So the testing positive is this first one there, 0 0.095. So if I put that into my calculator, we'll get a value of 0 0.515. Now before, okay, that probability was actually 0 0.7037, okay. So now we can look at these and say how has it changed. So we can see that the probability, so this probability has gone down, okay, has got smaller. So that's what we want to be able to say. Um, so if the if only ten percent, if only ten percent of the population had the disease, then the probability of of having the disease given that you have a positive result probability of having the disease given a positive test decreases from 0 0.7037 to 0 0.5135 and that's our answer. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to visit my website and see, find other resources and videos.